to look at one small example. This is a PowerPoint that was put together before Fukushima, but it's important to look at Chernobyl. Chernobyl happened in April of 1986. It was at the time the world's worst nuclear reactor. Fukushima may be four times worse because there are four nuclear reactors that blew up. This nuclear reactor in the middle of Ukraine and Belarus now, it used to be the Soviet Union, but now it's on the border, just like you know, of two, inst two institutions that manage risk. So it's hard to manage an area that doesn't have a border. But this was only three months old or so, and had very little spent fuel and very little extra radiation. The four nuclear plants that blew up in Fukushima were 30 years old, and one of them had a plutonium mixture uh, for fuel, which has been authorized and allowed to save by the Japanese state, but it was number three, Fukushima number three, was the one with plutonium fuel. And plutonium has been found in the air in small quantities over the United States. So it's all over the world. And plutonium has a half-life of a quarter of a million years. So here is a picture of where the nuclear disaster occurred. This is the tiny area where the plant is. It says Chernobyl here. The confiscated closed zone. Notice it's not contiguous. It's not connected. Just what Beck says. It's unpredictable. These people did not have anything to blame. They're not to blame for anything. But this country got most of the radiation. Um, it's a completely different country. Permanent control zone. Huge zone. This zone is 77,000 square kilometers. People are allowed to live there as safe, but they have huge problems. This area is banned from human contact and human habitation for maybe 500 years. Think what would happen in North, North or South Korea if a problem happened. This would be the end of Korean civilization, really. This is a small country. This country is the size of the state of Indiana in the United States. One nuclear power plant explosion would destroy all Indiana, and one problem here would destroy all of Korea. And these, it, it's this risk that's constantly there. That's what Beck is talking about. 400 million people were exposed in 20 different countries. One country decided to do this, but the damage is felt by many people. Notice a lot of what the whales, uh, as well as Scotland, got a lot of range, and it's, it's far away. Uh, Sweden, Sweden was the first place to construct this. Why did Sweden talk about this? Because Russians, they didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to tell anybody it happened. The only reason Sweden knew it happened is they monitor their own nuclear plants, and they found that high levels of radiation were outside their own nuclear plants, and they thought they had an accident. But it wasn't them, it was Russia, it was the Soviet Union. And eventually, people began to talk more about that. After the Soviet Union collapsed, it was revealed that there were many other nuclear disasters that they never talked about, particularly one near Kishtim. Kishtim is a large dead zone within uh, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, of course, didn't exist 20 years ago. All those states used to be within the Soviet Union. So Kazakhstan is a huge dead zone for a long, long period of time. Um, it's not even their fault. This is the inheritance we're getting. Milk had to be thrown away all over the world. There are small levels of radioactive iodide in milk right now in the United States. They found radioactive cesium in strawberries and other plants in Northern California. Cesium has a half-life of 30 years. I mean, this is a you know, almost all, a huge portion of the U.S. food comes from California. And that's the first place that gets all this radiation after Hawaii. Um, it says the impossible happens. Notice it's not just Europe, though. It goes all the way over here in North Korea, too. So North Korea had, a lot, had enough problems. China had enough problems in the 80s, but China got an additional dose of radioactive fallout. This was by May 4th, May 5th, 
That's only a few weeks after the accident in late April, April 27. So, the political fallout. Here's the material, new material risks and the new social problems. Huge national movement started. That's sub-politics. Sub-politics happened in the Soviet Union. They did not trust the Soviets anymore. They were pissed. They had done this to them, and a lot of different separatist movements happened. This was uh, stimulated nationalism, the Ukrainian numbers. The Ukraine saw and killed probably 30 million people in the Ukraine in the 1930s. And so, you know, this, on top of that, <laughs> was enough to really piss everybody off. So it also stimulated the Glasnost openness. The Soviet Union tried to reform, uh, but it was too late at the time. People began to question, do we want the Soviets managing our environment anymore? The Soviet leaders were mostly engineers, not lawyers or representative people. USSR collapsed within five years. It's still a very expensive disaster. Right now, according to the a United States group called Physicians for Social Responsibility, Doctors for Social Responsibility. They had a press conference uh, about Chernobyl and Fukushima and U.S. dangers to nuclear power. This happened two weeks ago, and I watched it online. And they said that even today, the countries of Belarus, where's Belarus? Countries of Belarus and Ukraine. They spend 5 to 7% of their gross national product on this disaster still. They're spending a huge amount. Belarus in the 1990s spent 20% of its entire budget on this problem. This is financially catastrophic too. Not just health catastrophic, but financially. Um, radiation and health, of course. Health effects as a result, increased likelihood of cancer, birth defects, inheritable birth defects for the next generations, for many, many generations, brain damage, conjoined twins, reduced humidity, you get sick from everything, genetic damage is impaired. Um, within 14 years, there were 8,000 deaths. It's estimated maybe 3.5 million are sick. Many people, not even more. These are some children's drawings of the way they feel. This is you can see this penumbra, this ominous fear. Uh, this is my grandmother by a young child. Um, Death of my life by Marina. Chernobyl is war by Irina. Beauty and the Beast. Um, nothing escapes radiation. Chernobyl art hell. Um, Self-portrait by Natasha. Notice radiation ticking in her mind, thinking about it all the time. Here are some radionuclides from nuclear vision. And all of these are created from nuclear fallout explosion. This happens also, if you have it, with a nuclear bomb. A nuclear, well, a nuclear reactor for electricity is a slow motion nuclear bomb. It's designed to slow down the reaction, but it's the same reaction, it's the same chemical. And states tell you it's safe. You know, they construct it as safe. But there, since World War II, um, since World War II, I know you can't read that, but um, 1945, there have been 60, 60 criticality incidents. This means unpredictable explosions that have killed people in nuclear plants around the world. This was data released by Los Alamos Laboratories. They put together a list of all the you know, examples where people are just working and suddenly, flash, there's just a flash, you're dead. I mean, it doesn't mean that you're dead immediately. It's a blue light, it's a glowing blue light, and that means that uh, neutrinos, neutrinos have been released at such high rates that it's visible, and if you see a blue flash, you're probably going to die. Maybe within a month, maybe two months. Um, but they have found small levels of blue flashes in northern Japan already, outside the nuclear plant. But cesium-137 accumulates in fatty tissues, the liver, spleen, iodide-131, accumulation in thyroid, 
It's called the Chernobyl necklace. A lot of people died or had an operation to remove their thyroid because the thyroid is your body's place. It stores iodine. Iodine is something you need, but the body doesn't know that it's radioactive iodine. So the body, ooh, good, iodine. Iodine's everywhere. And it puts it right here. And uh, this destroys your immune system, too, when you lose your organs like this. A lot of people absorbed iodine through milk, um, particularly children. It was not known widely, but one of the vectors, one of the ways that iodine gets into your system is cows or other animals eat things. They concentrate the iodine from the grass into a liquid milk form, and then butter, cheese, dairy products. Um, that's why they began to pour milk out. Milk becomes deadly. Strontium, you know, different things concentrate in different areas. Strontium goes to your bone and liver, barium, bone tumors up to 30 years later, tellurium, cell mutations, yttrium, damage to the liver, plutonium concentrates in the liver, uranium accumulates in your bones and liver, uh, xenon, oops, I forgot to look up xenon, sorry, but xenon is also, it's, a, it's an inert gas, but it's radioactive, so I'm not sure exactly what it would do. This is important to know, that how that, you know, some states will say, well, these are small levels of radiation around the world. It's only large doses that kill you, small levels are safe. But as early as 1972, this is much earlier than Chernobyl, he discovered that low levels of radiation over a long period of time were more damaging than higher doses of short period of time. So a constant pressure is more damaging, like a dripping water will drive people insane. You know, dripping water, you know, if you have a bucket of water thrown on you, you'll dry off. But if you have a constant dripping in your life, whether radiation, that tends to be more dangerous. So once you ingest or inhale, even very low levels, the back cow effect immediately starts potentially lethal tissue ionization. See, it's not just a small part of outside. If the particle gets inside of you, it, it damages in a much closer way. And um, free radicals are created because of this ionization. And these are all the diseases associated with free radicals. Degenerative disease, memory loss, neurological diseases, arteriosclerosis, heart disease, Alzheimer's, damage to your brain, Parkinson's disease, arthritis. A lot of people who are young look so old in this area. You think they were 50 years old, but they're 20, they're 25. I mean, they just look like old people, but they're young. Your whole, your whole system has been fighting so much, it just wears it out. Heart disease, or stroke, diabetes, cataracts, cancer, aging. So a lot of things are connected to free radical damage. 